Good evening and welcome to it. This is the Private Property Podcast and I am your brand new host, Sibs Matiela, here to talk about all things property. Um, today on the show, we're going to be talking about how to secure your rent through vetting procedures. We're speaking to a lovely man by the name of Waldo Marcus, who's the head of marketing and sales at TNP Credit Bureau. But before we get into that, let me tell you something. All roads lead to the property show. This year, we're back in real life and virtual with content generated in our Metaverse studio. We've designed the exhibition space to replicate the world's most popular property game and added in activities for the whole family, including an indoor park and play area. The game board is divided into four journeys, namely First Time Home Buyers Boulevard, Investment Avenue, Sellers Street and Renters Road. Visit thepropertyshow.co.za for more information and to get your tickets today. The Property Show 2022, 27th to the 28th of August at the Santon Convention Center. No matter where you are on your property journey, we've gathered the experts. You heard it here first. All roads lead to the property show. It is happening at the Santon Convention Center on the 27th and the 28th of August, proudly brought to you by privateproperty.co.za. You can join us digitally from anywhere in the world. Uh, Right now in life, we are securing the bag. And if we can't secure that bond, we are going to secure the rent, honey. So we're going to talk to Waldo Marcus, who's the head of marketing and sales at TNP Credit Bureau about how to secure your rent through vetting procedures. Waldo, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? So thank you very much for having me and um, welcome to the show. Looking forward to seeing you on air more often. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you on air. <laughs> Listen, Waldo, tell me, can you give me a brief overview of what you do over there at uh, TNP and, and just your journey at the company? So TP and Credit Bureau um, has been going for 22 years. Um, I joined the organization about 18 months ago where um, I specifically focused on commercial property as we service both the commercial and the residential rental market. Um, And thereafter, I joined as head of marketing and sales of this brilliant organization to continue its um, growth. What role do you guys play in the property market? I am a layman when it comes to property rights. So you're like, yeah, we do this stuff and this department and that one. And I'm like, what, do you, what, do you, what is it that you guys do? What do you mean? So, so TPN's key focus as a credit bureau is to collect data on how you pay your rental every month. And that is for both commercial and residential property, but specifically around residential property is about like you pay your credit cards and how you pay your insurance and your bond. Um, that is usually collected by credit bureaus. And should you then be interested in placing a a tenant, you then will come to us and we provide you with insights on how the uh, tenant performed historically. We do just, we do more than that. We also create an ecosystem for residential uh, property owners, uh, whereby they can um, promote their property, ensure that they have all the necessary documentation like leases and application and inspection forms we provide those as well as a, a series of other um, compliance tools to ensure that you as a property owner um, engages with your tenants with all the necessary legislative uh, regulated documentation um, to ensure a great relationship. Waldo, when it comes to vetting in the property market and rentals specifically, I mean, we've run into a number of problems and issues as the years have gone by. I'm not looking at you, Cape Town, but I am. What I do want to ask you is that obviously there is a vetting procedure, right? What are the different steps in which one one can follow when it comes to vetting tenants? And, and what would it take to pass that vetting procedure? So the, we, we take various, we pull from eight different databases um, and those databases ensure that A, the person that has applied to move into your property is the person that they say they are. Um, we have seen in the past um, and the people have actually signed lease agreements and the person that's moved in is not the one that signed the agreement. So identity fraud is quite big. So we traditionally um, encourage people to start vetting by making sure that the individual that they're signing the lease with is a true person has not um, stolen the identity. Then of course you want to look at the affordability and can this person afford to move into your property? Yes, they provide you with potentially bank statements, um, but it's not coming from a third party. So we provide various tools 
that allows you to then say, all right, this tenant can afford moving into my property. Yes, in the past, they've paid their rental on time. They've paid their cell phone accounts on time. Should they have car repayments, they've paid these. So it gives you a holistic view of what this individual can afford. And should they move into your property, what is the probability of them paying their rent to ensure that you, as a landlord or property investor, can then, of course, also make, um, come, you know, make sure that you can make your payments towards banks, bonds, levies, et cetera. So it's quite a holistic view that we take on an, on, on an individual. We've seen that during COVID, a lot of people have fallen behind on some of their payments and therefore we provide you with a five year view on this individual. So it's not just a, a snapshot of where they are currently. You then can understand, listen, for four or five years, for four years, they've paid their rental and other accounts very well. And then during COVID they struggled, it means that they, intentions are good they want to pay i'm so glad you mentioned that actually um this sort of five-year snapshot because i was going to ask you sometimes you have a checking account and you have a savings account and then sometimes you've got a 32 day you need to take the money from the one to the other to pay the thing um so sometimes you might not pass the vetting procedure but perhaps you do still qualify uh, are there any opportunities for tenants to resubmit their applications and supporting documents if you know they don't pass the first time round so that sits within the hands of the landlord at the end so when um, a tenant applies that the landlord um, or the property owner will or managing agent will perform the vetting process um, they are they will then decide if the tenant has been successful or not what we do encourage is, is that when you do apply for rentals and you are aware that there has been um, some impact on your credit score inform the landlord about it so when they do do the credit score that's not a massive surprise and then of course encourage people to pay their rental on time it does improve your credit score so when you do decide to move or apply for a bigger um, apartment or bigger home um, that you do have a positive credit score and then therefore you won't need to go um, around applying for various properties i hear you in terms of vetting waldo do you only offer this for residential properties because we're talking a lot about individuals paying their rent at their you know apartments and their flats and their but is this only you know regarding residential property owners and and tenants so we service both the residential and commercial um, property market commercial um, in most cases is uh, credit checks or what we refer to as a rain check on businesses as well as individuals and these vary from a person that's renting a warehouse all the way to the listed property REITs and funds in South Africa um, where we um, collect data on, for instance, how a pick and pay would pay all the way down to a small mom and pop store. And once again, that helps them build a positive credit score um, within the property sector. Um, what we are, um, what we started about five years ago is also to collect um, how people are paying their school fees, both public and private schools to improve their credit scores. And also when people are there for applying for rentals, it also then looks back and say, have, do they have kids? And if they had kids, um, have they paid the school fees? We know in South Africa, it's a massive struggle to collect school fees. So that was one of the markets that we felt that we can make a big difference and help schools to ensure that they collect their school fees that's due to them. Wow, I had never considered that. <laughs> and I'm really glad you said it because now parents will know that they're being vetted to see if their kids can go to that school or not. Um, okay. Let's say my wildest dreams come true. I win the lottery and I'm now a prospective or a new landlord. I've just entered the property market. What is the best advice you can give me? Do your research, understand exactly where you want to buy. Try and look at some trends. Um, we provide property reports and there's a few other companies as well. Understand what the, what the market has done within that area. Um, go to resources like private property, the private property show. Um, and get as much information as possible before you making a decision. At the end of the day, should you purchase a property, you are in for it for the long run. Um, and then secondly, make sure that you understand what is the uh, maintenance and repair cost potentially, as well as rates and taxes and levies when you calculate your bond. Understand those costs are also increasing at a much higher rate than CPI. So um, when you plan and you budget for moving into a new house, please consider that before you make a purchase decision. I love that word budget because I think a lot of people did a lot of budgeting pre-COVID, um, you know, and started seeing their plans regarding property and, and property ownership come into fruition. Um, and then 
we hit this massive sort of roadblock in in a lot of ways. Um, so I'm curious as to how the current economy has affected, you know, the rental market. So we've seen during COVID um, that the rental market was 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 negatively impacted. Um, we've seen rentals de-escalate in some provinces. Um, some rental brackets were really badly impacted, especially the, the below 3,000 rand rental bracket per month. Um, but we started seeing a recovery. And then, of course, the start of this year with the higher inflation, fuel prices continuing to increase um, in expectation and the slowdown of GDP. But I think a key factor here is, is what we expect the rental market to do is to see an increase in demand as people are holding back on purchasing decisions and saying, all right, while there is such uncertainty within the economy, but also within the interest rates, we would rather hold back and continue renting or move into the rental market until we feel comfortable, we find the right space. So in the medium term, we're expecting the uh, increase in demand. Um, escalations in the rental market will also be going up um, as to try and keep up with the inflation and repair and maintenance cost. Um, so overall, we, we, we're expecting the rental markets to continue improving. What we should cautious, uh, be cautious about is when you place tenants, make sure that they can afford the rental. And we put that as an exclamation mark because you do not want people moving into your property, sign a lease agreement, and they're not able to afford the rental. And it can take a long time to evict those individuals should they refuse to leave under a cancellation letter. So would you say that you foresee some positive changes in the future for the rental market, Waldo? Yes, we, we do see in the in immediate, medium term, we definitely see um, the rental markets improving. Um, it will not come with its own challenges, but it will improve, we expect. All right, tell me what's in store for TPN Credit Bureau for the next five years. Well, that's a very it's a very interesting question. Um, so, as I mentioned, we've been um, we've we've been in the commercial uh, property and residential property market, and then expanding into in, into education. And education is both private and um, public, but also tertiary education, where we see that there's there's so many schools in South Africa that are really struggling to make ends meet. Um, and we're definitely are going to grow that database. We also have a employment verification database, the only one in South Africa where we can say, yes, the person is employed and it's not by submission, it is based on data that we collect directly from UIF. So that would be an interesting one for us to continue building out. And then we've got a few surprising projects that's in the pipeline that um, we're going to go live towards um, the um, second half of this year, most probably in quarter four. Um, that is definitely going to change the way people um, view affordability. So when you vet a tenant, um, to determine if they can afford your rental, um, it's going to be a seamless automated process for you. So there's some some exciting stuff to come up, but I can't give away everything just yet. <laughs> I, I totally get that. Waldo, this is now a personal question that I'm going to ask you. It's not on my list of the questions that I need to ask you. But I, I'm really interested to find out if, if your personal opinion is that the market is geared to favor tenants or to favor landlords. And I'm speaking now sp particularly to affordability, right? We've seen a lot of things happen with the economy. We've seen a lot of people not be able to afford their rent or the school fees or very many things. We've seen salaries not rising at the same rate as CPI and inflation. And a majority of people are in a position where it, they're between a rock and a hard place. So I understand needing to protect landlords and their investments and their properties, but I also feel as though maybe there should be some room allocated um, and, and, and just some grace towards what we've actually experienced financially as a society over the past two years and a bit. I think the markets and the free market system has, has factored in um, you know, the, the stress on the consumer. Um, and as I said, we've seen um, rentals in some property and some provinces actually de-escalate. So they've lost um, rand values. And that is why it's because there is a lack of demand. And in some areas where there's a huge amount of supply that can, comes through and there's additional building construction taking place, we've also seen rentals coming down. So if you, for instance, look at what you paid for a, a two bedroom apartment in the in Santon CBD, now what you paid for it pre-COVID, it's a lot more affordable moving closer to your office, your work, et cetera, considering the high fuel prices. 
so in a way the free market system has definitely done it from a legislative and a regulation perspective there is various um, acts in place to protect the mm -hmm. tenant um, and once again there's procedures and and, and processes in place to ensure that there is the, the, both the consumer and the landlord is is looked after so i believe in south africa from a from a governance perspective we have done very well to ensure we protect the rights of the tenant um, and then as well as the landlord um, and that is why it's so critically important that we do vet the tenants before moving in and we do ensure that they sign the right lease agreement and that's completed um, so that you don't have um, procedural problems down the road. Thank you. I needed that answer and I think a lot of people needed to hear that as well. That was Waldo Marcus, uh, Head of Marketing and Sales at TPN Credit Bureau, telling us about how to secure your rent through vetting procedures. It is competition time. One of our lucky viewers is going to walk away with a 500 Rand cold hard cash and a ticket to the property show happening on the 27th and the 28th of August 2022 at the Santon Convention Center, proudly brought to you by privateproperty.co.za. I need a drum roll, please. Somebody, anybody. Okay, do it at home. Today's winner is Ponzo Ontatile. I hope I did not butcher your name. Congratulations, you have won 500 bucks. Thank you for joining me this evening. We'll see you again tomorrow. This year, we're back in real life and virtual with content generated in our metaverse studio we've designed the exhibition space to replicate the world's most popular property game and added in activities for the whole family including an indoor park and play area the game board is divided into four journeys namely first time home buyers boulevard investment avenue sellers street and renters road visit the property show.co.za for more information and to get your tickets today the Property Show 2022, 27th to the 28th of August at the Santon Convention Center. No matter where you are on your property journey, we've gathered the experts.